New Delhi, a city of millions of people, a city of high rises, swanky malls and the most modern outlook one can think of. But the city was once a classic case of infrastructure not keeping pace with the ever increasing population and its requirements. Whatever mode of transport people took, it would take them hours to reach where they had to, thanks to the ever-clogged roads of Delhi. High density of population and its commuting needs had turned the city into a difficult one to live in. Travelling in a pollution-free, hassle-free environment and travelling fast to save time seemed like a distant dream for Delhiites. Will this dream ever come true? One wondered. It was not before October 1, 1998, when the construction work on Metro started, that people saw light at the end of the tunnel. Twenty fifth December 2002 brought about a radical change in the way people were going to live in the city with the opening of the Shahadra Tis Hazari line. And then there was no looking back. Metro rail network started spreading fast. On 4th October 2003, services on Tis Hazari Inderlok line started. And on 1st April 2004, Inderlok Rathala line started functioning. And soon after, line 2 and 3 became functional. 20th December 2004, Vishwa Vidyalaya Kashmiri Gate. 3rd July 2005, Kashmiri Gate Central Secretariat. And on 31st December 2005, Dwarka Barakamba Road. The estimated completion cost of Phase 1 was 10,571 crore rupees, out of which 64% was raised through a loan by JBIC. 5% came by a debt towards land cost. 14% came by equity participation by the Government of India. 14% equity was picked up by Delhi Government. The remaining 3% was generated by property development. Such was the DMRC's functioning that almost immediately after starting the operations, it came into profit. We are making an operational profit from day one. We are one of the five metros in the world to make an operational profit. Uh, there only, are only four other metros which make an operational profit out of 135. All the other metros make loss. So it's a very efficiently run organization. In ev every day today we are earning one crore of rupees. About 70 lakhs, 70% 70 of that money is coming from passenger revenues and 30% is coming through these property development activities. Today, when a person enters a metro station, he finds himself in a different world altogether. A series of swank railway stations greet the commuters all across the city. As one goes through the automatic fare collection system and the flap door entry, one knows that it's the gateway to a world-class facility in the city. Once inside, one cannot take the eyes off the aesthetic and modern-looking station. The centrally air-conditioned stations are not only good-looking, but also designed very thoughtfully to make them user-friendly. A board that displays the color-coded map of the metro line helps a commuter to know the route and where he's headed. The stations are easily accessible for the physically challenged. Specially designed ramps have been made to make their access to the station easy. The entry paths are lined with tactile tiles to guide the visually impaired from outside the stations to the trains. Help is at hand at every corner. Metro Sahayaks provide assistance to the commuters to make their travel easy and hassle-free even in the busiest of hours. Stations are also equipped with public announcement systems and are monitored with closed-circuit TV cameras. There is a negligible chance of safety being compromised in the metro premises. To make the passengers safe and secure, the watchful eyes of the security personnel are constantly at work. The calm faces of the people waiting on the metro platform for the train to arrive 
present a stark contrast to the hassled ones seen on the bus stands and roads. Earlier we used to travel by bus or auto. That was the only mode of transportation for us. It was very, very hectic for us to travel in buses. Now that we've got metro, we save a lot of time and it's air-conditioned, so hassle-free. Now we can see the difference because uh, when we used to travel from the buses, we used to take a lot of time. I mean, uh, physical exertion was there, your time consumption was there, your um, money was involved there. Now there is nothing as such. People used to suffer a lot by traveling in buses. Now this is not a problem. They will, they can travel in comfort and reach the destination within a minimum time. It is never a long wait for the metro trains at these platforms. Frequency of these trains is a remarkable three to five minutes. Once inside, the commuters get the best in comfort and style, like the station. The train is centrally air-conditioned too. The metro has sleek coaches fitted with wide window panes. There cannot be a better way to see Delhi than seeing it through the comforts of a metro coach. And if you think it is exciting to see the world zip by outside, it is no less interesting to observe the people inside. The passenger profile using the metro comprises people of all social strata. From the well-dressed executives to the daily wagers, they can all be seen travelling together in perfect harmony, unknowingly and effortlessly. The metro seems to have donned the mantle of a social leveller. The trains are designed to be safe and user-friendly. Regular announcements are made about the next station and warnings sounded about closing doors. There are route maps displayed in each coach. Apart from other safety features, there is a communication system in every coach through which passengers can contact the train driver in case of an emergency. To handle the humongous transport facility, a perfect system is at work. About 250 train operators single-handedly drive the metro and look after minor technical snags en route. Their job is really demanding, keeping in view the fact that 4 to 5 lakh people travel on the metro daily. The signalling of the metro is flawless. It has been worked out keeping in mind the smaller headway of train operation and consequent safety requirement for effective smooth and safe travel. The strain on the driver is reduced by deploying the built-in safety feature of speed regulation, braking and fast flow of information. At the Metro, personnel management holds the key to smooth and flawless operations. DMRC has a system of its own in place. We have a managing director. He is the chief executive of the organization. All decisions are with the managing director. We have a board of directors uh, who he reports to. We have functional directors and under them we have heads of department. That is how the system works. Uh, but all key decisions are taken by the managing director who enjoys a lot of autonomy. He reports to the board of directors all right, but he has a lot of autonomy and all major tenders. The managing director has been delegated the powers by the board of directors to decide major tenders within the organization. One unique feature of this organization is the ability to take decisions within the organization. We don't have to go to outside agencies. The Metro staff undergoes rigorous training in various disciplines, technical as well as procedural, before they join DMRC to serve the commuters. Courses and modules designed by the DMRC Training Institute make sure that the Delhi Metro gets the most efficient staff capable of handling the challenging and demanding day-to-day -day operations. To make commuting comfortable and fast for Delhi denizens, the Metro never sleeps. Metro rail operations run round the clock. Metro trains head for the depots for maintenance in the night. The DMRC staff that is busy running the trains in the daytime keeps itself busy in the night making sure that everything goes on well the next morning. 
night maintenance involves ensuring fitness of the trains and making them sparkling clean for the next morning. Well, if running and maintenance of the system is so arduous, can you imagine what must have gone into its making? Impeccable planning, sound technology and a lot of hard work of course. The planning for the metro in Delhi started in the 1950s. The first steps towards the construction of the metro were only initiated in 1995 when the DMRC was registered. Physical work on the project started on October 1, 1998. A perfect methodology was put to work. Uh, we have adopted the latest techniques for our construction. Uh, we have uh, utilized the latest machinery. For example, we have the tunnel boring machine. The type of tunnel boring machines used for the Delhi Metro project were used for the first time in India. They are very massive machines. They enabled that, uh, the construction of the project to go through the heart of the city without disturbing the city's surface. We have, we have done tunneling in very crowded areas such as Chavri Bazaar. And then in other areas also in the signaling, the fare collection, we have got the latest techniques available, the methodology. The Metro was planned to run on two levels, one on the elevated tracks and the other underground. Making the elevated tracks for the metro to run was not an easy job. It required state-of-the-art engineering. Delhi falls in the seismic zone 4. So the elevated tracks were designed in such a way that they could withstand earthquakes of high intensity. To run the metro underground was a mammoth task. The engineers and workers worked day and night with great precision and accuracy to complete a project that deserves to be counted among the best of engineering marvels in the world. The most astonishing aspect of the DMRC operation was the ease with which it overcame the hurdles and carried on with the construction without affecting the daily lives of the people of the city. Every site had its own set of problems, most common being traffic management. The construction was to be done on the roads, occupying a major portion of the road itself. The biggest worry was, how would the traffic move? Will the city come to a standstill? But all the fears were unfounded. At each site, the flow of the traffic was managed in such a way that the vehicles ran smoothly alongside the construction work of the metro. People living around the construction sites never felt any discomfort while the construction was on, even in places like the highly congested Chavri Bazaar. When the metro was made, there was no trouble at that time, but there was a little trouble at that time. There was a jam, but there was no jam at that time. Because the metro people इस तरह से काम करते थे कि किसी को कोई परेशानी ना हो। मेट्रो वालों का कंस्ट्रक्शन बहुत अच्छा था। तो इन्होंने सारा दिन में जो भी काम होता था रात को ऐसे लगता था जैसे काम हुआ ही ना हो। सारा काम समेट कर अपने चले जाते थे। और ट्रक को कि मिट्टी के ट्रक रात को निकलते थे तीन चार सौ ट्रक रोज रात को निक नहीं अनुभव होने दिया कि नीचे कितना जबरदस्त काम चल रहा है ऊपर हम लोगों को लगता था कि जैसे बस छोटा मोटा काम चल रहा है लेकिन जब अंदर से सारा काम हो रहा था तब अब जाकर के जब हमने देखा अंदर तो यह पता लगा कि अंदर तो इन्होंने पूरा एक इंडस्ट्री बनाया हुआ था पूरा वो ये खोद खोद करके और बहुत जबरदस्त काम चल रहा था हमको इस बात का अनुभव जब हुआ जब ये सारा काम हो चुका लॉट ऑफ डिगिंग वॉज डन फॉर द कंस्ट्रक्शन But the muck was never seen piled up anywhere at any site in the city. Despite hectic construction activity day and night, coordinating with various civic agencies was required for the smooth implementation of the project. Land acquisition seemed to be the main issue. Land acquisition, we did not have a problem because luckily our project comes under the local government also. We come under the government of Delhi. So the government of Delhi has got its own machinery for land acquisition. They have given us very good support in this regard. In addition, we have also got very good support from the legal system. No stays were granted for uh, our project. So our project was not delayed 
on, on this account. Projects are normally delayed because of land acquisition problems and funding problems. Both these issues we did not, did not have a problem. We got the land uh, well in time because of the help from the state government. We, we managed to get our funds also uh, well in time because we got a good loan from the, the Japanese government and from the two governments. DMRC started working in a city which already had some infrastructure in place. Hence, many routes of metro encountered hurdles. At one point, it had to pass over an existing flyover. It was a challenge to design and construct the metro track at such a height. Today, the stretch stands as a testimony to the designing and construction genius of DMRC. At the other point, there were high tension wires it had to negotiate with. They were shifted underground to facilitate the passage of the metro track. Many existing water and sewage lines and drains came in the way while construction. They were all diverted in a suitable manner without causing any problem to the neighborhood areas. Technological and designing expertise of DMRC overcame all these hurdles like a true pro and the result was an amazing value addition to the transport system of the city without disturbing the day-to-day -day life of the city. The roads are beautifully decongested now and nobody can really tell that there are trains flying right beneath the road. Every infrastructure project needs space, valuable land to develop. But Delhi Metro is a unique project that has not taken away any space from the city. On one level, it runs on the elevated tracks and the transport moves below it unaffected. And on the other level, it runs under the ground and the traffic moves on top unaffected. Isn't it amazing? The greenhouse effect will undoubtedly be one of the most serious problems facing mankind in the 21st century. Its effects are both immeasurable and irreversible. Climatic changes, rising sea levels and famine to name just a few. The greenhouse effect is caused by the emission of harmful gases, especially carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Transport is central to this problem and is responsible for one-fifth of all carbon dioxide emissions today. Emission levels are increasing faster due to mankind's dependency on road and air transport. To preserve the green environs of the city, special care was taken by the DMRC. Environmentally, we are a very friendly organization and for every one tree that we cut, that we are forced to cut, we plant 10 as compensatory afforestation. We give the money to the forest department who does the plantation. And we also give money for the upkeep for the next three years for these trees. Now in phase two, we have gone one step ahead. For every one tree that we are cutting, we are planting 11 trees as compensatory afforestation. And one of those trees which are planted is planted in the same area from where the tree is originally uprooted. So it's done close by. In addition, all eco-friendly varieties of trees, they are transplanted. So they are not destroyed, they are transplanted to a location close by. So we are trying to preserve as many trees as possible. Metro is making a significant contribution to environment-friendly mobility. It travels without directly emitting exhaust fumes. It is powered by electricity, some of which comes from renewable sources such as water and wind. No wonder people are breathing easy. The atmosphere in, inside the metro and uh, you can travel any distance but you don't feel like pain over there. It is very easy to travel all over Delhi now. There's no traffic jams, there's no uh, the, cow, the crowd, the sweat in the buses, it's all done away with. So I think any day it's brought about a revolution uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in Delhi as such. Metro is so good to me. It is wonderful, excellent and I want that this metro network should be spread to all the corner of the Delhi. What was once a distant dream today is a reality. People have already started living that dream. 
they have at their service a world-class mass transport system. Polluting traffic, overcrowded buses, haggling with rickshaws and taxis is all passe. The Delhi Metro has emerged as a role model in terms of engineering excellence, efficiency and project management. Delhi is now remembered for its newly acquired status symbol. A halo has been added to the horizon of the city. Metro, it's been a great change. Delhi is far more beautiful after Metro has come. Metro is really a very good, convenient thing for us. I think life has become real easy now that we that Metro has come here. Metro is boom for Delhi. Miles to go before I sleep seems to be the motto of DMRC. To bring about a change in people's life, it has now taken its expertise to the national capital region. And this is just the beginning. The whole nation is looking up to the DMRC to add quality to billions of lives.